Hello everyone, uh, thank you for joining us today. We have a, a very exciting and new topic that we want to cover. Uh, it's one of those topics that are discussed uh, many, many times, uh, whether during uh, doing design work for, for e-commerce or service companies, uh, many customers uh, and prospects come and talk to us about it. Uh, with you, Khalid Saleh, I'm the president and co-founder of Invesp. Um, if you're attending our webinar, if you join us in our monthly webinars, you're familiar that with Invesp, uh, we are leading conversion optimization firm. Uh, we provide conversion optimization software and services. With me, uh, Ayat Shukeri. Ayat is uh, my partner, my co-founder in the company, and she manages all of our conversion optimization projects. Hello, everyone. Uh, with that, uh, just a couple of quick things. I just want to make sure that everybody can see the, the slides. And uh, let me see. Um, Let's get started over here. Uh, of course, you can always post any questions that you have. Uh, you can post them in the area where you can type in the question. Um, let me see. It seems like we've had, as usual, we always have some technical difficulty. <laughs> uh, you can uh, you can post the questions uh, for us um, in the area in the GoToWebinar. We'll be able to see your questions. We will take some of those questions, answer them during the webinar. The questions that we're not able to answer, we will make sure that uh, those questions uh, we'll make sure that those questions will post some of the, some of those answers uh, after the webinar on our blog. Uh, with that, so before we get started, uh, can you guys just give me a quick uh, indication? Uh, can everybody hear our uh, our uh, voice loud and clear? And I'm seeing more and more people. Excellent, excellent. Okay, the no says that uh, that everybody can hear uh, can hear us loud and clear, so we are ready to get started. Uh, one question that always comes up about the uh, recording for the webinar: uh, we do post the recording of the webinar. Uh, I would say by Monday we will have a link to the webinar available on our website. If you attend the, if you attend the webinar, you'll receive that link via an email. We do not make the PowerPoint slides available; we just make the recording for the webinar available. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, here are some of the topics that we are going to be discussing uh, today. So it's going to be some theoretical aspects and some more hands-on uh, actual case studies. We're going to talk about some of the critical components uh, in terms of homepage analytics. Uh, how do you determine whether you should be looking at a homepage and evaluating and doing conversion optimization for a homepage pure, purely from an analytics perspective? Um, another question that we are going to be asking, what is the significance of testing a home page? And this might look a little strange because everybody think that the answer is very straightforward, but we'll see if you change your mind after we go through the analytics uh, section. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the conversion optimization factors that impact the design of and the, uh, the optimization process for a home page. And then finally, we're going to give uh, two couple, a couple of case, uh, couple of case studies, um, uh, and we're going to discuss those with you. With that, let me get started talking about the home page analytics. What are some of the key metrics that we want to keep in mind when we are evaluating a home page? Of course, there's many, many factors that you want to look at, but uh, some of the critical factors when it comes to all, uh, when it comes to a, a home page, one of the first things that you want to look at is the bounce rate. And typically, what we like to see the bounce rate for a main home page on the on a website to be less than thirty percent. Um, if we start seeing that the bounce rate increase or you know, climb above the 30%, then that might tell us that there is an issue in terms of the messaging that the visitor is seeing prior to clicking on the website and then the messaging that they are, they are seeing post-clicking on the, on the website. Uh, some of those issues, by the way, many, many times, well, I'll, I'll take that back. Some of those issues are mixed between uh, SEO problems. Uh, so for example, if you're ranking for the wrong keywords, and sometimes they are conversion optimization uh, problems because there might, might be some issues with confidence and trust. Um, the website, when the visitor lands on it, does not does not lend itself to, to trust. So the visitor decides that they want to leave right uh, right away. Um, another um, another issue that uh, that you want to look at is the exit rate. Uh, we usually like to see the exit rate for the for a main homepage to be less than twenty percent. That's a good indicator. I'm assuming that everybody's familiar between uh, uh, familiar with the difference between the bounce rate and exit rate. So bounce rate, if somebody is coming from an external source, they come from Google, from social, they come from email, and they land on the main homepage, we expect, like I said over here, thirty percent of the visitors to exit to 
financial balance. And an exit rate is more comprehensive measure. So a visitor viewed another page, then they got to the uh, to the main homepage. We expect 20% of those visitors to, to exit. Those are the key metrics, but those are very simple metrics that you should be able to track right away. You log into any analytics program. If you're using Google, if you're using Omniture, you should be able to track those metrics uh, quickly. Another metric that is very important for us when it comes to conversion optimization is the percentage of main home page views to the overall page views for the website. People find this a little strange, and they're trying. They always try to understand why is this metric important uh, when we try to determine whether we should be doing conversion optimization for the main homepage or not. Uh, think about this. Ultimately, if you want to optimize the main homepage or any other page on your website, uh, you're only optimizing the the segment of traffic that goes through that main homepage. So if I have a you know. Let's say in, on my website, I have 100,000 visitors. Of those 100,000 visitors, only 10,000 visitors go through the main homepage, and I optimize the main homepage. That means I'm optimizing the experience of only 10,000 visitors. I'm not optimizing the experience of all 100,000 visitors. Uh, if I increase the conversion from the main homepage to the order confirmation, so macro conversion, if I increase that conversion rate, I'm still increasing only the conversion rate for those 10,000 visitors. The remaining 90,000 visitors, because they do not go through the main homepage, uh, designing a better homepage will not help us actually see the uh, an increase, a tremendous increase in conversion rates. So that's the reason you want to look at that percentage. The percentage of page views for the main homepage compared to the page views uh, for the overall website. So the higher that percentage is, the better the the better chance um, you will have an impact in the conversion rate, and the more focus you should pay, you should pay more focus on the main homepage. So, for example, if I only find that only ten percent of my visitors uh, view the main homepage, you know, I would be I would not necessarily jump and on optimizing the main homepage right away. But if I find that seventy percent of my visitors actually go through the main homepage, that's definitely uh, that definitely makes that page a more prime candidate for conversion uh, for conversion optimization. Um, another metric that's important, and this metric is very particular to Google, uh, which is the uh, used, to, used to be called the index value, now it's called the page value. Uh, now, Google calculates a page value, a numerical page value based on revenue if a visitor goes through a main homepage on their, on their path to conversion then Google assigns a dollar value for each one of those pages that are on the on the conversion path. Ultimately, uh, this is not necessarily a dollar value, uh, an one-to-one -one dollar value. That's, you know, you take the number of steps and you divide them and you give it to the particular page. Um, it's a lot more, more complex. However, it's a good way to tell you how much a page contributes to your conversion rates. And Google calculates a value and assigns it to each one of the pages on the website. So for example, I might say that the main homepage has a $5 value. And at the same time, it gives an average for the, for the overall website uh, for the page value. Now, if you, there, there is usually and typically two scenarios that we have to look at and consider. Uh, one is that the homepage value is higher than the site average. And another scenario is that the homepage value is actually less than the site average. Those are the two scenarios. And let's give you a specific example. I just pulled this for uh, for one of our customers, where the homepage value was uh, five and a half dollars. The average page value for the site was four dollars. And the question is, well, should I be optimizing uh, the homepage or not? Just purely looking at the page value. Let me let me pose the question to you guys and see what uh, what do you think? Should we consider optimizing the homepage if in this case, or should we skip actually optimizing the the homepage? Um, and let's see let's see some. Uh, Let's see some answers over here. What do you guys think? So if we have, and I see no, and then I see optimize, I see skip. <laughs> uh, so I see that uh, the, oh, it's a 50-50 actually. <laughs> yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. So the answer is, you know, kind of mix between uh, between the two. Now let's see what the, uh, you know, um, there's two schools of thought, actually, when it comes, just similar to what you guys said. The very first school over here that says, yes, you should optimize the homepage if you're just purely looking at the main homepage of the page value. The reason for that, 
the homepage generates more dollar value compared to the rest of the website, so we should definitely try and optimize it because we know that the, if, if a typical page generates four dollars, the main homepage generates five and a half dollars. You know, if we can convert more visitors, then there is definitely more value to more money to be made there. Now. The other second school of thought is says, no, do not optimize the main homepage. You're already maxing out. You're already performing much better than the rest of the website. So let's focus on the rest of the website and determine, you know, and come back to the main homepage later. What is the correct answer? Um, the correct answer is really in this case, you need to look at the exit rate and the bounce rate. Um, if we are losing, we are, you know, the exit rate and the bounce rate help you determine how much, how many visitors you are losing from the main homepage. If I know that we're only losing, and, and in this case, also you want to even look at the number of exits and the number of bounces. If we know that we are losing 10,000, 20,000 visitors, if we're losing 15, uh, or if we're losing only 1,000 visitors, then in that case, optimizing uh, if the pool of, of exits and bounces is small, then I would not even focus on that. But if we see that the pool is large, so if I see that the pool has, you know, let's say 20,000 visitors or, or 100,000 visitors, and notice over here, I'm not talking even about percentages. I'm talking about the number of visitors. People always find this a little strange, but I always talk about, you know, about the size of the pool and also depends on the type of website that you are dealing with. We have some customers, for example, on the main homepage that have, you know, two, three million page views to the main homepage. Now, Two three million page views, even with a twenty percent exit rate, that's still a significant number. We're still talking about two hundred thousand, uh, two hundred thousand visitors that are exiting, or sometimes even four hundred thousand visitors exiting, and with a dollar value of five and a half dollars, that is significant, and that's an area where I want to capture some of those visitors and convert them, and I know it will have a major impact on the bottom line for my for my customer. Uh, another area that's you want to look at and some of these would require us uh, require you to do some math and there is really no specific uh, science to this you just have to look at the numbers and try and make sense of those of those numbers uh, we always like to pull the visits the overall visits for the website the overall visits to the main homepage and compare those to the visits with transactions or visits with conversions now um, there's something important over here that i want to point out is if you are an e-commerce website and you have funnels set up on your website and you try and pull the visits with conversions specific uh, segment advanced segments in google analytics uh, if a visitor is going through a funnel and then they convert, Google counts that as a conversion. So you need to be very aware of this. So sometimes you have to do visits with transactions. So just kind of be mindful of, of doing that. Uh, in this specific case, as you see over here, the overall uh, page views for the site was 1.8 million. Uh, the visits with transaction page views were 148,000. So we start looking at some of those, uh, some of those uh, numbers. Now notice for the main homepage over here, we had 132,000 uh, page views. Of those, only uh, 3,800 converted. Actually, were the visits that that converted. So one of the one of the things that I want to look at is the number of conversions that we generated through going through the main homepage versus the overall conversions. As you see over here, the main homepage only contributed about 2.62 percent of the overall conversions. Does that mean that the main homepage is is valuable? No, not really. Uh, the main homepage contributes very little to the overall conversions for this for this particular website. Um, also over here, we look at the uh, homepage uh, page view conversions versus the homepage views. Uh, you compare those two numbers, the 132,000 versus the 3,800. We notice over here that 2.93% uh, of the homepage View, uh, page of the homepage views are actually uh, resulting in a conversion. That means that we still also have an opportunity. So I'm giving you some metrics that might appear like they contradict each other, but you want to kind of keep in that because conversion optimization is about looking at all these different metrics and putting them together and trying really to make a determination whether we should be optimizing the main homepage or not. Now, one of the areas that we want to optimize to put things in a full perspective, so we know that only 2.93% of the homepage uh, page views uh, result in a conversion. How does the rest of the site operate or perform? Notice how we did some math over here, and we find that for the rest of the site, on average, 8.36% of the um, of a particular page visitors will actually result in conversion. So the main homepage is actually performing tremendously less than the rest of the uh, than the rest of the website. The homepage is also contributing very little to the overall conversions. With some of these metrics, we can make a very solid case 
why not we why we shouldn't be looking at the main home page at least not as an initial page that we should be uh, we should be optimizing now i'm going to throw it to iads lots of times i do this analysis and people say oh we are not going to be touching the main home page just let's leave the main home page we're not going to be looking at it iads uh, now iads brings the different perspective which is you know kind of the now the the conversion optimization perspective, why you should be looking at the main homepage. So again, I mean, a lot of the, the different theories that are, you know, just based on looking at analytics, it may be contradicting to say, okay, well, let's optimize the homepage. But, you know, what you have to consider is that when I'm looking at conversion optimization as kind of just a, a, a complete change for my site, and I'd like to really undertake that, I'm not going to be looking at it just from one page's perspective or some page, some pages on the site. I want to look at, okay, well, how can I develop a roadmap that's going to, you know, serve uh, my purpose of converting more customers, uh, converting more visitors into customers. So initially I might say, well, you know what, the homepage isn't going to be on the top of my list based on all of this analysis that I've done. But at the same time, it still is significant in the sense that it remains to be kind of that front, you know, door or the face of the the whole entire site. So I do want to ensure that I still consider it and include it in uh, that uh, roadmap that I create for for my uh, conversion optimization on the site. And also, what you have to consider is that you know, of course, you can find this information uh, using analytics and looking at different navigational paths of customers. But visitors may reference the homepage throughout their their visit. So you want to ensure that if I'm optimizing the rest of the site, I'm not forgetting the homepage so that it looks and feels uh, and and that the, the entire kind of just overall value proposition isn't necessarily resonating on that homepage as it is on the rest of the site. And then finally, again, going back to that specific uh, point is, you know, what we want to ensure in order to increase kind of overall trust and confidence in the customer is that, you know, uh, overall site continuity and page uh, congruency is uh, definitely there on that homepage. I'm not necessarily uh, ignoring the fact that I want to ensure that there is that, you know, continuity throughout the site. And within that on-page homepage, I want to make sure that there's that congruency of the overall, you know, value proposition that I've been working on, you know, throughout the site, making sure that it's resonating page to page. I want to ensure that it's also resonating on that homepage as well. Now, one of the other areas that we want to talk about is when you are designing a, uh, let's say you're designing a main homepage, or if you are going through the uh, the process of doing conversion optimization on the main homepage, uh, probably perhaps one of the most important things is to understand what are the main functions of the main homepage. Because understanding the main functions of the main homepage will help you design a homepage that is persuasive, that is uh, uh, that is highly uh, that will highly convert visitors. Right. One of the first things that we always talk about when we're you know, any kind of optimization project, even, you know, besides even looking at just the homepage, you want to kind of consider, okay, well, what's the overall value proposition of the site? And we want to ensure that that value proposition is very present on that homepage because it's very important for the customer who's entering the site through that page or referencing it throughout their visit that they are able to see that value proposition there. Again, you know, we always say that, you know, that that homepage, again, is that front door, that face of the site. You want to make sure that it is that hook. And again, you also want to determine looking at your site, you may be an e-commerce site, you may be, you know, a kind of uh, providing some sort of a service for customers. Depending on also what you're providing for the customer, you're going to be able to see what type of function your specific homepage has. A uh, homepage also serves as kind of just that overall filtration that users can use to find specific products. So they might be navigating, it might be landing on, you know, category pages or product pages, but they go back, reference the homepage, they should be able to find exactly what they're looking for. Even if they enter that page, you want to make sure that, you know, kind of navigation is very clear. Customers are able to find what they're looking for immediately. And, you know, this is one of those areas that people do not pay close attention to. Uh, lots of times, yes, we do have uh, top navigation. Lots of times we have auxiliary navigation. The problem is not all types of personas like to use navigation. And sometimes navigation is just thrown together very quickly without really giving it much thought. So we want to find other ways, um, uh, other ways to filter the visitors and direct them to find the specific product that fits their need or the specific category. Um, we don't, you know, yes, categ yes um, categorization is good. Yes, search is good. But what else can we add on the main homepage to find the visitors uh, or direct the visitors directly to what they are looking for? And we were looking at a couple of uh, main homepages. 
uh, just uh, prior to the webinar, we're looking at the Best Buy main homepage and we're looking at the O'Reilly main homepage and, and take a look at those after the webinar. It was sort of interesting because there's just so much going on uh, on their main home pages. And yes, there is navigation, but sometimes the messaging can get a little overwhelming for a visitor who's coming to looking for a specific a specific product. And then I would also say, I mean, I would reference our, our previous last month's webinar when we talked about widgets, because a lot of times that widget, that presence on that home page is important. So that's something to consider as well. The home page also is a an area kind of like that hub where you can display all your special offers and and all of your deals. Of course, we would caution against you know, and we'll get into this of oh, kind of providing too much uh, messaging on that home page uh, where uh, there's just so much competing messaging there. So again, I mean that's something where the home page functionality is kind of uh, important and significant. Yeah, one of the things, and we'll show an example of this where. Uh, one of the uh, one of the customers just took just too many offers and just threw them on the main homepage. It was like, well, we have all these offers and we want to show them to everybody. And at some points, you're really overwhelming customers, and they're just ignoring your your special offers, which is the last thing that you want to to do. For service based sites, again, you know, your homepage can serve is can serve as more more of introducing kind of the overall processes on the site. What are the expectations? Um, what is the customer going to experience on the specific site? It's kind of just that intro to what you're offering. Um, and you know, we found that a lot of times uh, different service based websites will have just kind of a generic message on that homepage, expecting the customers to understand what's going on, um, and they won't understand kind of the overall site process until they actually get further, maybe get to the subscribe page or something like that. So, you know, you just want to caution, make sure that customers understand from that homepage where and what the site is all about. Uh, by the way, we uh, typically have a couple of special offers for you. So I should have announced this probably at the very beginning, but here's our very first special offer. Now, last time we got a little overwhelmed with the number. So this time we're going to be very, uh, very strict. Uh, so uh, you'll receive um, a copy of our book. We have to apologize because it's not going to be signed, actually, although the offer over here says signed. So you'll receive a free copy of our book. Uh, but uh, you need to email book at invest.com. Please include your name and mailing address. Please do include your name and mailing address. If you uh, if you live outside of the US, you need to include a phone number as well. Um, and you must promise us to post an honest review on Amazon. So last month, we were promised to, to get uh, 10 reviews. And I don't think we got uh, we got only one review. So um, you know, we ask you, you'll get uh, this uh, free copy of our book, but we want to see uh, an honest review on Amazon. Uh, we'll allow just the very first 10 requests, the very first 10 emails that get to uh, book at invest.com will receive a copy of the, of the book. And this will be a good segue, actually, to what we're going to be talking about. The next, uh, next thing is, what factors in the conversion framework actually impacts uh, actually impact uh, the main homepage? So, as uh, as you are probably aware, our conversion rate uplift formula says that the main factors that impact conversion are three T, which is trust, minus two F, which is FUDs, fears, uncertainties, and doubts. Uh, fears and uh, the FUDs are come uh, are dealt with usually through incentives and engagement. Uh, all of this is comp uh, all of this is impacted by the uh, by the business, uh, by the uh, buying stage, uh, and all of this is also all together is impacted by the persona and the complexity of the sale. Now, when it comes to the main homepage, the main factors that actually play the most impact are trust and confidence, factors of trust and confidence, and then uh, the factors of personas and the factors of in incentives. This is not to take away from the other elements such as FUDs, engagements, uh, the buying stage or the com sale complexity, but the main three factors that you want to take a look at is trust and confidence, personas and incentives. And we're going to apply those within the context of couple of case, uh, couple of case uh, studies. Now let's go back and we'll, from here, we'll jump to our first case study. And Ayat, you want to walk us through this case study, the different designs and what we're looking at. Right. And actually, I mean, this is uh, not the initial uh, test that we had for this particular site. Um, but again, as you'll notice, there is, uh, you know, kind of that large uh, search bar. 
Um, we have kind of just an overall process. This is a, a service-based site, um, so definitely kind of wanted to highlight that on this specific site. Um, what we wanted to do was we wanted to ensure that the customer still, even though although you provide that process, you want to ensure that the customer really gauges and understands what the site is all about. And that can be through different means. So one of the means that we actually wanted to display here was through video. And a lot of times, you know, and that's something, you know, maybe another webinar that, that we could actually have for, for, uh, uh, for you is kind of just discussing video by itself. But video can offer and really highlight if it's used correctly and placed in the correct uh, manner. Um, so that's something that we really wanted to test on this particular page. Again, boosting that overall confidence, letting them understand what they're getting with this specific service. So what we did was we decided to test the video on the right nav here, as you can see, and it's above that today's pics. Um, and then uh, the other version was where we placed the actual video, but it was minimized. It's not kind of the full size video on that header as well. Again, trying to show two, two different locations to the video. And of course, the original does not have the video at all. So what do you think? Is the winner the original A? B, the video on within that right nav, or C, where the video is placed in the header. Please uh, let us know what your vote is. So we're looking here at the answers, and we're seeing C, C, B, B, C, 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 C. Wow. <laughs> okay, so it looks like the majority say C. There are some that say B. Um, it doesn't seem that anybody think the original one. Let me see. Is there, are there any uh, there, A's? I think there's two A's. A couple A's. A's. Okay, a couple of A's. All right. And like I said, this is not the, the, the initial rendition of this test. We've gone through, uh, you know, many changes on this particular homepage. Um, but what we ended up with, you know, the one that we want to display to you was this specific one. Because, again, what we want to show you is, okay, uh, for the service-based site, how can we enhance kind of overall trust and confidence in uh, the specific service? So the winner is? <laughs> B. And so what we'll find here on B is that, again, it does show the video, but the video is on that right nav. Now, why did it not win on the header? What you'll see is the header was minimized tremendously. So the video was actually rather small on that kind of uh, uh, header. So, you know, it didn't necessarily have the impact that the customers were, were looking for. Um, we see that there was a 7.22% uplift in overall conversion rate and a 17.43% in uh, revenue per visit. So again, a significant impact on overall conversion and overall revenue per visit for this particular um, homepage. And and this is, uh, by the way, um, uh, one of the one of the things I want to also point out. When you are conducting a conversion optimization project, you want to track a couple of things at a minimum. Uh, you want to track the uplift in conversion rates and the uplift, uh, for example, this is coming from Omniture uh, revenue per visit or the uplift uh, impact on the average order value. The nice thing about this, uh, the nice thing about this test, for example, is you saw we, the, the customer, our customer saw an, up, uh, an increase in both. And of course, that is just translates into a significant uplift in the dollar value that the customer sees as a result from the from the test. Uh, there are sometimes uh, there are sometimes where you increase conversion rates, but you see a little degradation in the average order value. So you want to keep that that in mind. Keep track uh, of of both of those numbers. At the same time, and this is very critical, when you are conducting a test, you are conducting a test for a conversion or non uh, or non conversion. It's a it's a in statistics we call it a solid state. It's either a zero or a one. You cannot conduct a test to track an, an increase in, in an average order value or an increase in the revenue per visit. The reason for that, the average order value, there's no dis, no discrete st state. Um, you know, you, you don't really, you can't measure whether there was a consistent uplift in conversion rates. Uh, so having said that, at the same time, you can still, if you can, if you're, if you're able to still see a consistent uplift in the average order value that is comforting. It's not necessarily it doesn't give you a statistical confidence, but it's comforting to know that this uh, that there is uh, something that's you know that there is an impact on your average order value. Final thought on that as well that you want to keep in mind is that sometimes if you're 
testing and you see an actual consistent uplift in, uh, in the revenue per visit or in the average order value, you want to exclude cases where there is one person who came in and just ordered, you know, just placed a humongous order that is way out of the range of the average order value and caused your, your data to be a little skewed. So you want to be able to exclude those extreme orders from your calculation. So all of these are kind of like we're, we're throwing additional things, but you want to keep all of these things in mind where you are when you are conducting a test. And just one note about this particular test is that a follow-up test that we've done for this particular site is that, you know, kind of the above the full fold, full length blue header actually took that whole entire space and we actually place a video there, which is actually winning currently. Um, so again, you know, the idea being is that the video is very significant and it impacts the customer, but the way that it was placed on the header before and the way that it was minimized did not have the desired kind of effect. And like you said, one, and this is probably a very interesting. Um, another thing is how long does it take to finish a test, a particular test on a particular uh, page? Not a particular test, but how long does it take to optimize a page? If you just see from this one test, there is lots of other hypotheses that we want to test. There's a lot more. Is it Was it the location of the video? Was it the content of the video? Was it the design? Th there's tremendously uh, more areas of opportunities, more hypotheses that you want to explore. And you can literally spend probably, if you want to really give a page its, it's due, uh, it's, it's justice, you probably can do like, you know, anywhere between 10 to 20 different tests and you're just, just testing different hypotheses. What's important is you actually have a hypothesis you're, try, you're trying to validate and you have something that you're going after as opposed to just throwing a few things together and just thinking, well, you know, okay, well, did this work or didn't it work? Um, I know with video, for example, we've done some testing with a couple of customers. Uh, with one customer's video was had just tremendous, uh, tremendous impact on their conversion rate. And with another customer that sold furniture, video had horrendous impact. So... Um, but with either case, you know, there, there's a lot more to, that you want to think about and analyze before you can judge whether video is useful or not useful to a website. Right. And, you know, what I would add to that is that, you know, when you're doing conversion optimization, that's where it's very key. You want to ensure that you're building upon what you've already tested. Can I, you know, based on knowing this particular fact about the video, am I going to say, okay, well, that's it videos on right now and that's it i'm not going to test any further what can i learn from that experience what can i learn from you know uh, the placement of a specific headline the placement of a specific element again that's where it's very key and that's why you know kind of basing it on you know more than just uh you know kind of testing and putting things together i'm basing it on theory i'm basing it on you know experience and basing it on what i've already done on the site i'm able to actually you know, have more impact on that particular site. Okay, <clears throat> very good. <clears throat> now, what I wanted to do is uh, actually show a case study for uh, one of the one of the companies that we've talked to recently, where they showed us the existing design of their of their main homepage, and we ran the design through our Panorama module. Uh, the goal from our Panorama module is to it's as part of our software package, and the goal from it is to actually analyze the page from 250 different angles, have a very structured approach and a methodology onto uh, how we analyze a page and uh, whether there's uh, any problems on a page, and that really helps the conversion optimization specialist who's working on the project determine what areas should be fixed on the on the page. So I'm going to show you this initial design and we're going to th run through this and then we can look at the new design that they've introduced and then we'll do some some analysis. So one of the very first things that we want to look at is how does the page appeal to the different types of visitor personas and does it do a good job in appealing for example to the spontaneous type persona, logical, caring, all these different types of personas. So right off the bat, if I look at the spontaneous type personas, and I'm a very spontaneous person, uh, we represent about 35% of the population, they come in quickly, they want to locate what they are looking for, and they really get turned off by welcome and, and this lengthy text that's there. That just turns off a spontaneous type persona, and right away, you know, there is a good chance for them to leave to leave the website. Does it even tell us here, for instance, what the site is all about? Do I know that this is not a content-based website? Based on what I see right now, it looks like a content-based website. And, and that's a problem. This is, by the way, a large e-commerce website. So yet the design over here looked like a content-based website. How about how about a caring type persona? And how does this appeal? A caring type persona, they're very emotional. You know, they, they really want to know what was the experience of people who dealt with your website? What, how did they feel about, about the buying products from you? Were they emotionally satisfied? 
And right now, if I look at, uh, and, and like I said, that the caring type persona are anywhere between 20 to 25% of the population. Um, nothing on the website that tells them, you know, here we had like, you know, 7,912 happy customers last year. And nothing that tells them that really our customers are happy, satisfied customers. R remember that caring type personas are the type of personas that actually read your about us page, are really trying to get to know you very, very close and personal. Right, and you can see, for example, it says since 1999, which tells you, okay, this site may have a lot of customers. But again, how can I see that? There's no way that the customer is going to be able to actually see that information. And how can I enhance that information so that it really resonates with the customer? Now, one of the other things is in terms of engagement and how engaging the, the page is. And there, there's different types of uh, engagement. There is offer engagement. There is social engagement. There is design engagement. And what I told, uh, what I told the CEO uh, when I looked at the page is just the side did not engage me. It just sort of turned me off at, at many, many different levels. Whether it's the, the pictures uh, used on the website, there was no social, social engagement. There was nothing in the offer that really engaged me. So, Got the, got, they got very low marks on in terms of engagement. Now, also in terms of incentives, um, and by incentives, we don't necessarily mean discounts. Uh, we mean incentivizing a visitor to act now. A visitor comes, you want to be able to capture the visitor to act right now, and you don't want them leaving the website. So we want to have some urgency and clarity to our, to our offers. And right now, the, the site says, well, here's what we offer in a very content display-like and there's nothing that tells me, really, you're getting a really good deal. You need to act on this, or at least you need to navigate throughout the, the website. Uh, in terms of trust and confidence, um, there was nothing on the website. There's no unique value proposition that tells us what the website stands for. Why what am I? Is, why should I be buying from you as opposed to one of your uh, one of your com competitors? Uh, there was some issues in continuity and the keywords that the website is ranking for, and then they land on the website. There's some issues in congruency. Overall, this website suffered from really uh, a high bounce rate. That's that was really explained by tr issues of trust and confidence. I mean, you want to ensure that you don't use too too much content. That's always key. Because when you use too much content, that means that you're expecting your customer to read and all studies point to the fact that customers do not read what's on a site. So if you're expecting them to read, you're expecting the wrong thing. They do not read. Very good. Yeah, I mean, you do, you do well to rank in Google when you have the content, <laughs> but that doesn't necessarily help, help your website. Now, sometimes, um, of course, it depends on the type of website. So if you're an e-commerce website, there is a right place to have content. Uh, many of us, for example, go to Amazon and there's a ton of content on the product pages. That's the right place to have them. Content sometimes on the main homepage, content on the category pages, not really. Those are filtration pages. Help me locate the right product. I'm not here to read about a million things. So you need to kind of have that, that right balance. Another area that you want to evaluate is the buying stages. Most e-commerce websites, including this one, are designed for people in the action stage, people who are ready to buy. I know what I'm looking for and you know I have my credit card in hand and okay, I came to your website. But most of the customers that come to your website are early on in the buying uh, buying stage uh, funnel. Uh, some people are, you know, still don't even have their they're still in the need recognition phase. Some are just researching, some are evaluating alternatives. Should I buy from you or buy from your competitor? Should I buy this product or this other product? Only 20% of your visitors are in the action stage. But you are designing only most e-commerce websites are designed for those 20, 20%. And as you see over here, there is nothing that addresses those visitors who are early on in the buying funnel. How can we actually address them and give them answers? Now, this is also very tricky because you don't want to give them, well, here is the guide to selecting the right, you know, let's say blood pressure monitor, and they get, read all the information, they go and, and convert on a competing website. So it's, it's tricky and it needs to be done in a very clever way. Right. And then what you want to also ensure, and we always find this, for example, like, you know, having so much content on the site, you know, for instance, the health articles or your blog, or those are the ones that are kind of just like really engaging the customer. Those are the ones that are above the fold, those specific elements. We want to ensure that those are not my primary conversion goals. I don't want to have those above what could actually help the customer con or the visitor convert uh, to a customer. So you want to ensure that there's a balance in the elements and that you're really kind of prioritizing what's the most important conversion goal, you know, from that specific homepage to the rest of the site. 
Finally, what you want to consider is uh, FUDs, fears, uncertainties, and doubts. And and uh, this is one of the things that we, when I was talking to the uh, to the uh, company, I mentioned to them that we need to do a FUDs analysis on each of the pages. What are the concerns that the customer, uh, that your visitors come with when they see the main homepage? Are they worried about uh, pricing issues? Are they worrying about shipping costs? And really the concerns, the FUDs are different from one, uh, from one page to the next. The FUDs on the main homepage are tremendously different than the FUDs that you see see on a card page, for example, then a category, then a category page, then a product page. On a main homepage, I'm worried, is this a trustworthy website? Are they going to have the right product for me? On a card page, I'm thinking, well, I've already added the product. Am I getting the best deal? How much am I going to be paying for shipping? Different questions that need to be addressed at different stages. So this was the initial analysis that we did with this website. They took that feedback, and they came up with this new design. What do you guys think? Um, much better design, more an e-commerce look and feel um, that you know that really provides uh, that provides them. You know, they took lots of the guidelines that we've we've suggested, and it was applied actually to this to this design. Um, actually, let, let me correct this. This was a design that they've suggested, uh, saying that okay, uh, we took the initial design. Here's a new design. Did we fix the problems that you've pointed out for us? So what do you guys think? Um, overall, let's, let's just get uh, some, some feedback from you, get you involved over here. You think the new design a lot better? Looks nice, much better. Uh, <clears throat> welcoming uh, and quick to navigate uh, with the search. Uh, very good. Uh, between <laughs> I need I need to send this message to to the uh, company between ten thousand thirty six thousand uh, times better. So I think everybody thinks it's cleaner. Is there still potential for improvement over here? That's the real question that we wanna that we wanna think about. <clears throat> and everybody is thinking that the website this website will do much better. And by the way, one of the things that we wanna do when we are we are introducing those two websites is actually do a split test between the two different designs and compare and see uh, which design actually performs better for the for the website okay so one of the things i want to go back and do the analysis again and see if the website actually addressed all all the needs again over here by the way think about the carrying type personas still nothing in the website design that addresses carrying type personas still we're not telling them anything about emotions uh, still there is nothing about the the website and as a matter of fact we lost the ninth in business since 1999 also when it comes to spontaneous type personas remember the same issue that we've had spontaneous is looking for something really specific specific product spontaneous are really addressed sometimes by by the use of widgets yeah, spontaneous don't necessarily like to use navigation so want to be able to address those types of visitors so while the website does a much better job in addressing for example aggressives and logicals it still really suffers from addressing spontaneous and caring type personas in terms of engagement gave them very low marks on the very first uh, analysis much higher marks i thought that the, the website is a lot more engaging as obvious by by your responses uh, i think they do a much better job the image is a lot better the design the the use of the white space much better job when it comes to engagement now incentives um, one of the things that they did and we, remember we talked about incentives that the website lacked incentives in the original design with this new design, what they did is they took, they said, you know what, we have a best price, best price guarantee and we have free shipping. And what they did is they took it and threw it on the main homepage. Again, when we talk about incentives, we talk about making the visitor believe that you have something very special for them today and that there's urgency in them acting. The last thing you want to do is take something as an offer that you have and just throw it on the main homepage and think that you are, you are done. I think. This is a better job than the original design. However, it feels like, well, you know, it's going to be here tomorrow. It's going to be here a month from now. There is nothing special about this. And the way you deal with incentives is through design and through copy and through location. And I don't think they do a good, uh, much better job at this compared to the original original design. When it comes to trust and confidence, uh, the original original design did not have a unique value proposition. But Ayat, what do you think about this? Why pay retail value proposition? Uh, it's not necessary. I mean, it, I I'm don't putting, think it, I'm putting Ayat on the spot over here because she hasn't seen <laughs> she hasn't seen this. I I think whenever you address kind of a value proposition, the question format, it's not identifying exactly what that value is. I mean, why pay retail it doesn't really tell me what they're offering and why they're significant and what's their overall value. So again, uh, the wording is off. I think they're on the right direction of what they want to say, but they're just not uh, wording it correctly. And by the way, this is uh, just a very simple rule for value proposition. Dumb it down, make it very clear, um, you know, very clear, very simple, very short. And 
very unique. <laughs> the the uniqueness is extremely important. You don't want to like come up with a statement, uh, like the most overused statement, the lowest price, the best customer service. Well, anybody can take that and slap it on their website. Just show us something that's very unique, you know, to your website, and that tells the visitors why they should buy from you as opposed to one of your customers. Buying stages. Now we talked about the buying stages and that the website was designed for people who are in the action stage. And I thought initially when they showed me that the design that's, Hey, they're provided like you know, some buying guides. Uh, if you are looking for, uh, for home weight scales, if you're looking for ex exercise and fitness, I thought that they actually answered like, you know, my question and they developed all these, all these different buying guides. When I clicked on them, however, I discovered that they're taking me to the category pages. So they're not providing buying, buying guides and the website continues to be designed better but still designed for people in the action stage i mean you could even see for example just a search is still not you know kind of prominent enough that's another way to again we want to make sure that we filter customers exactly what they're looking for and we're not doing that correctly the categories are not all listed on the home page either so that's again something to consider of course there's that top nav but you can't always expect the customers to click on that very good finally remember we had talked about fuds and do the fud analysis so what did our customer do over here uh, our uh, actually they're not a customer they were, were in discussion with them so i want to be accurate even what did they do they took all the possible fuds and they just threw them on the website free shipping best price guarantee authorized dealer customer service not not exactly what we are looking for we don't want just to take just like what they did with incentives so took, took a whole bunch of information and just throw it on the on the main home page you want to be aware of what are the concerns of the customer or the visitors at different stages and put those at the right place uh, for example best price guarantee might be might be significant on the main home page might be even more important on the uh, on the product page uh, the free shipping is uh, probably important also on the product page also important on the cart page um, customer service, not necessarily sure if it's important. Testimonials, general company testimonials, maybe go to the About Us page, but not necessarily on the main homepage. So you really want to do this more intelligently. I mean, I think this is definitely an improvement compared to the original page design that this was available on their website, but still there is tremendous amount of uh, improvements or space for improvement on this, on this design compared to, uh, compared to the final potential for the, for the website. Uh, with this, we're going to come to uh, to our last offer over here, and we make this offer uh, typically um, with some of our webinars, and we're going to limit this uh, to the first 10 websites that send us this. You're going to receive a free analytics assessment, a free analytics assessment to determine areas of opportunities on your website. Now, here is uh, here's the deal. You need to have a minimum of 400 conversions per month. Uh, that's really when we can do meaningful analytics assessment for your for your website. And in order for you to qualify, you need to send an email to this email address, convert at invest.com, convert at invest.com. Uh, with that, uh, we want to come to the end of this, uh, the end of this webinar. Um, next month, we're actually not going to have our webinar. So we're going to take a little break for next, uh, for next month. And then we'll come back uh, to you uh, back again in, in September. Uh, I hope that, uh, that you enjoyed the webinar. And with that, uh, we thank you for joining us. And we will talk to you soon. Remember the two offers that we have. If you want to receive a free copy of the book, you need to send an email to book at invest.com. If you want to receive a free analytics assessment, you, can, uh, you, should, you should shoot an email to convert at invest.com. Uh, thank you, everyone. We'll talk to you soon.